So let's try another one. Run a hundred stick. Let's see. <laughs> Multiply decimal. Right? So you just say what? Let's say algorithm. And so now this is an easy to understand algorithm. It's very kind of comforting, right? The no, no, always no, no, no chance of making a mistake. You multiply, multiply the whole numbers and then you count. You know, I purposely wrote it as a three assume. It's a fifth, okay, right? You count three of those and five. That's easy. Except you ask, what are you doing? What is it that's a move? Why should this happen? Now you know, I purposely use I purposely use three decimal digits there and two here you know, so make it so big. Because if I use single digit, then you start drawing diagrams. So if I say 1.5 times 0 0.7, then all your textbooks have plenty of diagrams, then say you do this, do that, and cut it out, and then, then and you just say 100 to all the time. But you know that explanation is no good, because if it were any good, it would be able to explain this, yes? So there's no one to say why something as basic as this is true. Right, let's try another one. Now this is a NAEP icon. You know what? Hey, you all know what NAEP is? National Education. That's it. National Assessment, Assessment of Educational Progress. This is a nation report card. It's a pretty impressive object. Funded not by White House, not by anybody, but directly from Congress to make it bipartisan. It is a biannual report on the state of the nation in education on reading and mathematics. Uh, so this is supposed to be the, uh, uh, so to speak, the, 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 what's called the, the uh, you know, the landmark of our <laughs> state of our education. Right? You could look at that, the signposts, yeah, signposts, yeah. So there's this problem. I need to read it. <coughs> Eighth grade. Do you see anything wrong with it? Well, first of all, you got the right answer. What do you think is the right answer? <laughs> you got the right answer? B. B, yeah? B. 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 Oh, constant bit, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So constant bit and then equal. Okay, that's great. So you see anything wrong with it? Well, with that, hmm? Gradually, it's yeah, not. Yeah. Well, uh, it's not a gradual change. Well, you can nitpick about that, right? Yes, you can, you can, right? But we're at the level where things, everything is so bad, there's no point nitpicking like that. <laughs> 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 well, it you know, starts at, it starts, it doesn't start at zero. Oh, th well, that's another hypothetical thing that you just have to accept. Okay. <laughs> you can start right off at constant speed. This is so it called automatically started running. Yeah. Well, it's kind of in the middle. So you can't can worry about. You can't worry about that. The other ones all start at zero, you know, except. No, you assume that somehow you can do it. This, this is, so that's a convention we accept, so we're not going to argue about that. You're absolutely correct, but we're just not going to argue about it. Thing like that at all, right? No, that's, but because it's like this, there's no point in rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. <laughs> because, 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 right? That's the point. I'm not saying that you're wrong, you're right, absolutely right. But sort of that's convention every school student learns to accept. There's a fundamental, critical, fatal error in this part. Right? I mean, part three. You sort of know what a graph is, uh, so would you say so? Uh, so this idea is that say at a point, one point one five minutes after she starts, let's say, right? You can read her speed. That here, so it, 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 it's like this, right? Okay. So you know at a given moment what the speed of her running is. Is that right? What is that? At a particular moment. 1.153 minutes after her start. How do you compute her speed? Now don't tell me read the speedometer. Mm -hmm. She ain't got no speedometer. Mm -hmm. 
See, in the car, you can deceive yourself by thinking, oh, I just read the speedometer. Running, you're going to speed up. So what exactly, how do you come, what, what, have you thought about it? What do you speed at that particular moment? Now let me, if, you, if this, it doesn't ring a bell to you, let me try again. What is speed to you? What's speed? Distance. Distance divided by time, right? So you've got to have some distance. And you've got to have a time interval, right? So at a point 1.534, Minutes after the start, what is the distance? Are you, what distance are you talking about? That's the point, right? We're not asking the speed over a certain distance. We're asking for the speed at a particular moment. You see, you are so we're so conditioned by the speedometer in the car. You are now thinking that at any given moment, you know exactly what my speed. I know exactly what my speed is because I can read the speedometer, right? <laughs> Now, but learning mathematics, one of the things in learning mathematics is not to take so, such things for granted, but start asking, what exactly are we talking about? Why is that important? Because you adults have gone through so much, you know what this, you have a general idea of what speed is. A young kid has no idea what speed is. You have to explain to the young kid. So you now, in order for the young kids to do this problem properly, they have to know what exactly is the speed at a particular moment. That's the clincher. <clears throat> at a, there's no way you can do that. The only way you can do that is when you do calculus, that you take the derivative and the value of the derivative of the function at that point. That time. So what we have been doing is in school mathematics, we have been feeding kids this kind of wrong information. No, it's not even wrong. This is completely, fatally, totally it's out of the ballpark. This is just not acceptable. But in learning mathematics, you're supposed to be clear, you're supposed to be correct, and you're supposed to be precise. Why? Because so that our kids can learn it. But we start to talk like this. We basically know sense. And then we expect children to learn it. So we're now asking questions about something children have no conception of. Let me speed. We just take for granted. They may not know what speed is, but they can answer this question. You know how bad that is, that attitude? It's like me speaking Chinese to you. You may not understand any word I'm speaking, but you get the idea. Is that how you want to learn Chinese? I hope not, right? Okay. So let's try another one. Okay, you see it. You use it every day. Right? I'll ask you what? Why? What, what, what? So you know, the standard, uh, standard statement is there's a minus sign here, right? Among friends of different things that they wear, put it. <laughs> <laughs> Up there, down there, left, right, you know. That's a standard answer. But otherwise, here are very definite mathematical symbols. Why is why are they all the same? And what, what is this? Like for example, yeah, what is this? What, what is this? You know what fraction is? 7 over 5. And this is the negative 7 over 5. That's understandable. When suddenly you have this thing, what is it? Our textbooks do not do this. Do not explain it at all. <laughs> you can make up a reason for this, but then the next step is how do you use it? Yeah. Is that what you is it you're serious about what you said? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the problem. Yeah. Okay, so next. Alright, uh, so this is again, everybody not gonna solve this problem, right? It's a prime example in proportional reason, right? Mm -hmm. Three is to um, uh, what about yeah. minutes to miles. Oh yeah, three miles per first. Oh right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. So. But they have never converted to minutes. We think they just take that for granted. That's not a problem. No. Yes. I know that uh, in the classroom you say, 
don't make me sick like this. Don't let it really get you into on the stand by stand. Yeah, but well, concern was much something much more fundamental here. And I said, so let's take that for granted. You, can, you know how to conduct all that. But the basic mathematical structure is not our concern here. So that's normally how you, this is done, right? Mm. You, nobody disagrees. This is how you done, right? Okay, but right, that's how you done. How you do it? All right, let's look at a similar problem. Correct? Proportional reasoning. Right? So, let me get that. Is there any dispute about this? And never mind the last line. Never mind the last line. Does they don't even argue with this one argue about the solution. Into acceleration and gravity. What is acceleration? There's no mention of acceleration. <laughs> See, you see, oh, okay. You measure acceleration, right? Yeah. What if n accelerated? Did you, you didn't think about that. No. What's wrong? Because <laughs> uh, they're, they're assuming that it's uh, she's. Who is assuming what? I mean, the problem kind of is what? everybody. I don't know. Wait, 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 wait. Kind of. What's kind of? What's kind of? It's the it's it's the average, right? That she walks no, 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 no. You have been bringing more than that. Right? Yeah. So the, no, that's exactly what my point. That's exactly my point. You all have been so brainwashed by something that's bad. You accept it. You just say, it's like having a grain of sand in your shoe. You have been walking on it for three hours. You just take it for granted. It doesn't, doesn't hurt anymore or something like that, right? But it's still there. It's still heavy. If there were any acceleration, they would have said it. They didn't say it. If I didn't say it, then you cannot say there is anything. Right? And that's exactly my point. Uh, uh, this, this, this is a standard problem. You, you see it in the textbook? Remember? Yeah, when you were in high school? So then, so why don't you apply proportional reasoning to it? And if you do that, that's what you get. But of course, you know that's not the answer exactly because of what uh, Malin said is your accelerator. But, that's a, but the point is not that it, it's the wrong answer, but you have been conditioned to certain problems. So you just look at it and you begin to make up things for the textbook and say, well, you know, the textbook means well. They really want to say certain things. I go along and I'm going to do the problems and therefore I'm going to teach my students to say, next time you see a problem like this, oh, just do that and you'll be okay. That's great for teaching them how to take standardized tests. But are you teaching them mathematics when you do that? So that's what I'm trying to drive at. We are you who have been teaching this kind of, so to speak, unspeakable mathematics to students for generations. This has been gone on for this 30, 40, 40, 50, 40, 50 years. Look at another one. Now, this is serious. So, this is what you see in every single textbook. <clears throat> Any disagreement? Have you come across a textbook that doesn't do this? Alright, so now, you think it's okay? You think it's okay? Now, I had, uh, I did something similar with a group of students in. Uh, in Palo Alto, uh, Gun High School, Palo Alto High, and so on. And I posted, and I, I did exactly the same thing. And I said, okay, you think the thing's good? And they said, yeah, <coughs> it's so simple. We have had it for years and years. Yeah, it's going okay. What well, could be wrong? Uh, let's see what could be wrong. A lie has many points. You said, take two points being killed, and you've got that number, right? What if you happen to take two other points? Look at this one. This one. But then you have a crisis because which is your slope? Which is it? This one or this one? What do you think? Let's put it to a vote. <laughs> which one is it? Is that, is that something we put to a vote? Or do you have to do something other than democracy in learning mathematics? 
Ah, they're the same, but who tells you they're the same? That's the problem, all right? If you say it, doesn't matter. Take any two points, they are the same number. Therefore, this is all, it is only then you can say that is the slope of the line. Doesn't matter which two points you take. All right, so I ask you, <coughs> you all went through K to 12? Did you ever, does anyone here? Ever had, uh, uh, have a teacher who actually brought it up and said, well, you know, we have to address this issue? Anyone has a had a, ever had a teacher like that? So what do you think the problem is? You've been sold a pack of lies, and you bought them, and the university people did not see fit to help you see through the lies and say, when you go back, you do differently. Don't so you think that's the basic duty of what university is supposed to do? They make you go through the program? So what happened is that to do this, you have to do similar time. Now you might have noticed by now that almost all, well, all well, actually every single problem is within the range of the institute here. Yes. We talk about free algebra and algebra. Well, not algebra yet, but, but this is I want to bring it to you as close to home as possible that even in the mathematics that you teach in middle school, it's full of problems that you may not be aware of. And it's time that we do something about it. So, in particular, we'll be spending a lot of time on geometry. As I put you in the note, the three weeks of the institute, two of them will be devoted to geometry. And this is not the standard fair in middle school mathematics, is it? Right? Pre-algebra, not only when you do pre-algebra, what do you do? Numbers, numbers, and numbers. We we'll completely reverse it. It's just devote to the purpose of geometry. You never know why. That's the first inkling. Why it is so? Because you don't settle this issue, you cannot teach kids what a slope is. And you don't teach kids what slope is. What do you think are the consequences? You don't really understand what it is. Okay, that's true, then, <laughs> but you can do much better than that. You, as a teacher, you know exactly what the down to earth consequences are, right? Kids scramble and say, how to memorize the four forms of an linear equation. Of course, they get it wrong. There's no way you keep, there's no way you can keep something like that straight. Something has four different possibilities. You want to say, under pressure in exam time, I can still keep them completely straight. <coughs> there's, just, there's just no hope. Unless you're extremely gifted in mem memorizing things. Now, should we do this to your children? Do you think you should do this to your children? That, that make them memorize, make them memorize, make them memorize. That's how you want to teach them. Obviously not, but I, 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 pos I posit that we should not do that to our children. You teach mathematics, you explain to them why they're doing it, so they don't understand it. Time comes, I can figure out, figure it out myself. That's the whole point of doing mathematics. Right? Oh yeah, so there, there's a, some comment about what I just said. Taking two points and they say that's the slope of the line. Yeah. That's 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 terrible. So that's not the slope of the line. That's the slope of those two points on the line. What you want to say is that no matter which two points you take, you always get the same number, and that's why that number is called the slope of the line. That's what we're trying to do. I teach it correctly for the first time, so the children, middle school students have an idea of what they are made to do. Right. So I think in my final example, yeah, okay. Similar, now of course, no one disagrees. Do you, have you seen a different meaning of similarity? Right, same size, not this, I mean, same shape, not this, uh, same size, right? Okay, so, look at this, do you think they are similar? Of 
of course, you know, since I posed this question, you say yes, right? Because of I say yes because <laughs> deprive my joy of what well, but you have to agree objectively. They're not the same shape, no. No. They're not the same shape at all. But they're similar. That's it. That by any measure, they have to be similar because it's almost the basic given fact. All graphs of Graphic equations are similar. I give you, so you don't believe it, go home and graph it yourself. Or take out your graphing calculator and check it. So what so what so what is similarity there? You have been taught this. Everybody has been taught this. Similarity means same shape, not necessarily same size, right? Well if that is if that kind of teaching is any good, you would you would have gotten the right answer before, but you didn't. So you should ask <coughs> what where have we gone wrong? And why, that's even better, why were you taught this bunch of lies? Mm -hmm. right? That's what we're trying to drive. 